Uh, this one's in the state of Washington. This is a, uh, we started with a 28,000 acre vegetable farm that had absolutely no animals. And they built a dairy so that they could, uh, first of all, produce milk, but secondly, then recycle uh, and, and those nutrients back to the land. And this 2,500 cow organic dairy that doubled the number of organic cows in the state of Washington cycles those nutrients back to over 3,000 acres, which is the proper way to do it. Again, 2,500 cows to about 3,000 acres. Not what we sadly see in a lot of places in, around the nation where a 2,500 cow dairy will dispose of their nutrients on a couple hundred acres which means then it becomes a toxic waste as opposed to a valuable resource. This is actually those nutrients going out over the pastures where the cows graze and we can uh, and irrigate right over the cows. There's no odor. The nutrients are very stable. In a, uh, when I say stable, the, the healthy beneficial bacteria have stabilized the nutrients so that they're uh, not uh, contaminating the cows with pathogens. There's not the odor goes into the soil and we get a, a tremendous response in the crops. And this is another one of my uh, customers, this dairy happens to be in Modesto, uh, where uh, over the last 10 years we've seen the, the production on the pastures more than double and the health of the cows improved dramatically. This is another one of my families in North, uh, Northern California customers and so on. And it's all focused on nutrient recovery which gives us healthier crops and properly manages this resource. This happens to be almonds being grown around Modesto with this material. Uh, we can look to the soil to also tell us how healthy this has become. A typical dairy where they flood irrigate, and you're, uh, you're from the Central Valley you're, Valley, you're familiar with a riser, as you see there in the background. When we started on this dairy, there was a 30-foot circle around every riser on the farm that was dead from the, in quotes, toxic manure that was spread out. Here now, after the program is instituted, the earthworms can come back and it's very healthy and the grass grows right up to the riser. Uh, we <coughs> create uh, through this system a very healthy environment for the cows. Uh, it's clean uh, and uh, hoof health and, and mastitis are uh, greatly improved and, and so on. Uh, my dairyman uh, are real world people, and this is a real picture of a dairyman. Uh, you can see the cows in the background. These are his manure lagoons. And yet it's so clean, he had no hesitation of, of taking this picture and then sending it to me because that's real. If we do it right, it's a very clean and healthy environment. Uh, this is also on that same dairy where the only <coughs> nutrients that go on this lawn and also the, the house plants in the house come from the dairy manure lagoon. So let's grow some food. That's kind of how I look at it because if we cycle the nutrients properly, it's all about growing food again and again and cycling these nutrients. It's not a one-way one street, but that is the problem we have in this country that our soils are becoming depleted of, of lots of micronutrients. Uh, we happen to be in Madera County today, and you, you folks are all very familiar with uh, those names and, and uh, this map of the county. <coughs> You probably are also familiar with all the various crops that you grow here in Madera County, and uh, I think you should be very proud of that. Uh, but also at the same time, uh, the, the government, the USDA, is uh, looking to where we have excess concentrations of nitrogen, which is shown on the left, and excess concentrations of phosphorus, which is shown on the right, and it's kind of uh, the dark areas, the dark green, of course you can't see the detail there, uh, show the areas where we have <coughs> lots of livestock, where nutrients are brought in and, and, and becoming uh, concentrated in Madera County, in, in, in quotes, is already on the map. In other words, shown as a hot spot by the USDA for concentration of nutrients, even though it's much uh, in better shape than counties like Tulare. Uh, I don't know, anybody know this guy? <laughs> This, is, uh, this isn't a, 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 a 10 most wanted kind of thing. This is somebody local you might know. And, of course, Tom, uh, over a year ago, went to, to Madera with us to visit the dairy and see firsthand what was going on. We walked the pastures, we walked the barns, and then we also looked closely at the manure system. <clears throat> and the 
the alleys are flushed about every six hours, and then we walked out to the manure separator. And this is weird. It don't even stink. It's right out of Kyle's ass. See that, Jay? You don't hear smell this. Maybe two hours ago out of the cow. That is weird. Look at their hands, how clean they are after nothing stuff. Comes right off. The other thing is we'll, we'll rinse them over here. In an hour you go, I don't smell anything in my hands. Okay. Uh, we're actually going to pass around some uh, samples of the, the fresh material that's been in Barney's car for several months and, and so on. But you can still see it's, it's fresh and it's not offensive because this system biologically is very clean and so on. And I'll be a, a, very willing to answer questions on any details uh, later, but I'm just trying to move through here and emphasize how clean the material can be if we properly take care of this valuable resource as opposed to the, what most of us would call the stinky mess that we're normally familiar with. Uh, jumping ahead here, uh, on my ranch back in Washington, we have used biosolid from the local sewage plant in Spokane, Washington for 20 years as a soil amendment. And uh, uh, that also is a very beneficial uh, program. It's uh, been very helpful to us. We had research plots and uh, I've done work with uh, Seattle, uh, King County and so on. And just to give you an illustration, this is from uh, Washington State University research plots. If you can see my little uh, pointer here, this is the normal wheat in dry land, dry land wheat. We bring in this organic soil amendment, make one change, and this is the response you get. Uh, it's a very significant increase in yield and, and plant quality by bringing in these nutrients. And the main re this, this plant here, uh, let me back up. The, <coughs> excuse me, back this up if I can. And there again. Okay, the, the, uh, the plant, uh, these plants that are shorter got the same amount of nitrogen as these taller plants. The limiting factor is the micronutrients that are missing in the soil and so on. So anyway, we get a great response and it's a great way to enhance the soil just like we can. Here again, we're using nutrients that were consumed by humans and cycling them. Uh, same concept as uh, doing it with, with the dairy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Over 20 years, we've used over 40,000 tons of this biosolid material. And uh, uh, it, it's been extremely beneficial. <coughs> I emphasize that we've utilized it. Uh, it's not waste if we properly manage it. And uh, uh, I constantly ask folks to eliminate waste from their vocabulary and actually uh, appreciate the kind of material they're dealing with, whether it comes from a dairy or whether at a, we're at a sewage plant. In my consulting work with Seattle King County Metro, we uh, developed a program that is be very beneficial. There's over 150,000 acres in central Washington that's tied to the Seattle program. Seattle owns no land. They, uh, that's been the big misnomer over the years of cities having to condemn land to dispose of this material on. Uh, when it's properly managed, uh, the, uh, the, the farmers will welcome it with open arms. In fact, the farmers there in the Seattle program pay for the biosolids, which is also very unusual in, in, if we look at the utilization of biosolids nationwide. The benefits in the soil and the plants is immediate, and you can see it very easily looking at the individual plants. Uh, the crops just... Uh, flourish the same thing that we see when we manage the material properly from the dairy farms. <clears throat> in the 90s, the material was called sewage sludge. I was on the team that renamed it biosolids, which is much more appropriate. And we emphasized its beneficial use, proper agronomic application, and so on, and, and uh, uh, developed uh, production, uh, biosolids production <coughs> facilities, not wastewater treatment plants. Uh, when I was able to ad uh, address the Water Environment Federation in 1992, actually I was introduced as the first farmer to ever uh, address that organization. 
we focused on how these nutrients from sewage plants should be used to grow food